hello, hello. I'm Katz and welcome to today's video. So today's topic is going to be my fusion plan for getting stock the broken. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to you guys, my viewers and subscribers. We're coming up here on the end of November, and a lot of you might have noticed that my beard is gone, replaced by this horrendous mustache that I've been growing for the entire month. And that is in support of the Movember campaign, which does support men's health, as well as research for testicular and prostate cancer. And the reason I bring this up is because there is also a charitable aspect to this. On behalf of you guys, just like last year, I plan to donate $2 for every subscriber gain for the month of November. And with a few days to spare in the month, we've actually already managed to be last year's donation of $80, meaning I've already gained about 40 subscribers for the month. So once again, shout out to all of you guys. Thank you for all the support and hopefully you are enjoying the content. That should be the main reason that you subscribe to the channel. But nonetheless, there is a benefit, at least for this month, that there is a charitable donation on your behalf. Now let's get back to the fusion plan. Stock the Broken, the latest fragment summon fusion champion, legendary support from the Ogren tribe, Spirit Affinity. And I must say, he's not exactly what I thought he was when I initially read his kit, but nonetheless, he is a super, super solid champion. And I think he's going to help a lot of people. Let's run through his kit really quickly. On the A1, attacks one enemy two times, has a 50% chance when booked of increasing the duration of all poison and HP burn debuffs on the target by one turn. This it will synergize well with the rest of his kits once we get through it. On the A2, attacks all enemies two times. The first hit will instantly activate poisons as well as HP burn debuffs on all enemies and then continuous heals on all allies. And the second hit will destroy each targets max HP by 3% for each poison and or HP burn activated by the skill, stacks up to 60%, and then fills turn meter of all allies by 20%. So this is a pretty powerful ability. Originally, I thought because it says all poisons here, there would be a full poison detonation along the likes of Elanoril and Xavian, but unfortunately, or at least less fortunate for me in particular, because that's the type of champion I've been searching for for years, um, this is more like a Teodor type ability where it's just gonna make all poison ticks go down by one turn, but not block all of them up at once. As far as comparisons to Teodor go, they are fairly similar, but Teodor does extend the poison and or HP burns before activating them, so he effectively preserves the amount, the duration of those debuffs. This one here is just going to activate one turn of it, so stock on its own, comparatively speaking to Teodor, is going to bleed through the poisons a lot quicker and not keep them up for as long. And I think it's important to mention that, of course, a lot of people probably don't have Teodor, so if this guy is going to be your only option as far as AoE poison detonation to a degree, then he's your best bet, and I do recommend going for him. On the A3, last ability here, 100% chance when booked of placing two poisons on all enemies for two turns. If they're under an HP burn, he will instead place three poisons on top of a weaken, which is pretty nice if you happen to synergize him with HP burn. Note that he does not have HP burn in his own kit, so someone else would have to bring that in order to activate that extra part of the A3. And then he also places two continuous heals on all, all allies for two turns, which is basically kind of like Bad L's ability on his A2, except that Bad L has a cleanse with that abilities but in terms of the buffs and debuffs the two poisons and the two contingent heals it's exactly the same and then the passive is where things get quite interesting where the damage inflicted by poison and hp burns will ignore unkillable and block damage so that's you know your man eaters your bushies your odins or anything marichka stuff like that anyone who has these annoying abilities to stay alive if they are taking damage from poisons or and or hp burn as long as he's on the team it doesn't have to be once placed by this champion specifically could be anyone else on the team as long as he's there, then you will ignore block damage and unkillable, which, which can be very, very strong in the right situations. On top of that, whenever allies on the same team attack enemies with destroyed max HP, any amount of destroyed max HP, they do 10% more damage. And last up, we have a speed aura in all battles by 20%. His base stats are pretty solid for a support champion. Nothing crazy, but not terrible either. 20,000 on the HP, 1100 on the defense, 103 on the speed. So it's kind of in the middle. It's not on the high side for a support. It's just kind of in the middle, but it's still good overall. So on paper, I honestly give this dude like an A+. He's a super, super solo champion. And once again, I do think he can help a lot of people. Specifically, he you know he's a poison, semi-poison activator, HP burn activator, which does mean that he can work in spider teams, any for any level of spider teams. He can be an HP burn activator. Obviously, he doesn't place it, but you can pair him with your Artak if you happen to have an Artak or a Mordecai or an Akoth the Seer or whoever you happen to have for HP burn. He can just be the activator for that team. He can also do a little bit of solo type content 
for some of the, like the stage uh, some of the dungeons like dragon for example uh ice golem on normal just anywhere think where waves and the bosses are susceptible to poisons he can heal himself on the a3 so you don't necessarily have to run him in full regen you can run him in immortal and perception stuff like that so it's not mandatory that you have to build him in regen for him to survive and uh solo content so again he can help a lot of people early game he can kind of get you going and carry you through teams in the mid game like i said he can help in like a speed farming spider composition and then even in the end game with this passive here he can start burning through or he can allow you to still burn through a marichka's block damage for example with a gizmac uh, and stuff like that so he, he can help different players from all facets or all levels of progression in the game now as a lot of you may know it is a given that i do every single fusion just because i have the resources to do so but in this case i actually am excited for him because i do plan to use him specifically for this a2 on my uh, spider hard mode team i do have a mixture of poison and hp burn explosion and so he will replace our attack who just does hp burn explosion and that will most likely make my team a little bit more resilient to like three percent resist runs where it just takes a little bit longer which is bad for like turn attack tournaments and whatnot aside from that i've always stated that some of the hardest rooms in centronos are the ones where you have only supports and you have no way to deal damage well a bunch of aoe poisons and poison activation is a great way to do some damage on a support champion so that will also be nice probably he'll fit into some room in the cursed city so there's two at least end game uses for him in my mind where he can come into play i'm not going to say that he's a must get champion but he is going to be very very strong for a lot of people and plus i think a majority of the player base skipped the last two fusions so hopefully you should have the resources to pursue this one and or the christmas fusion coming up in a month or so so if you have been inspired to actually go for this fusion let's talk about how you can get him with the fusion plan which will be linked in the description box down below for you to check out on your own so when it comes to the fragment summon for this champion we have a pretty standard layout we have the four dungeon split we have a champion training tournament going on right now we have a champion chase we have three dungeon divers three artifact enhancement champion training event as well as a summon rush there are a couple of things i want to draw your attention to first of all that there are 110 fragments up for grab less the 20 from winning tournaments which majority of us won't be able to do and they did shuffle around the points a little bit like the champion training instead of having 10 with the 10 bonus for winning it, they dropped it to five and they added the five from there down to the champion training event doesn't really matter usually not going to affect the point values that much but nonetheless it is good to keep in mind uh, which events you're going to have to focus on in order to get all 100 fragments and when there are 110 fragments up for grabs that does mean across both of these summoning events you do want to ensure that you get at least 20 across both of them that could be maxing maxing out the champion chase to get 15 and then getting five from the summon rush which is what i typically do for fragment summons or do that doing that in reverse because typically the nodes for those are five and then ten another thing to note is that this is my prediction for the black friday weekend historically speaking they have done a triple 2x meaning one day is 2x ancients one day is 2x voids and one day is 2x sacreds so you kind of get to pick and choose which one which aspect of that you want to participate in that is not confirmed yet but that is my speculation based off historical precedent for what they typically do for black friday and then lastly there are the typical pinch points which is what i call when champion training overlaps with the dungeon tournament which just means that you're gonna have to be a little bit more meticulous about how you spend your energy you can see that we have champion training overlapping with the entirety of fire knight a little bit of spider and then near the end champion training is overlapping with a little bit of ice golem and in the entirety of the dragon tournament for anyone unfamiliar with the format over here on the right we have the milestones for every type of event anything marked with an asterisk is a predicted amount it is usually based off historical precedent so they're pretty close but nonetheless after the events go live i make sure to go in and update them so that they're actually reflecting what the events actually have to offer and the main things i want to draw your attention to here are that uh, we don't exactly know what champion chase or what events going on with the champion chase so i have no prediction yet on what how many shards it might take so you know if pay attention to the spreadsheet i'll update it accordingly as things go along but depending on what the event is if it's a triple 2x i have to decide which shard i'm going to be pulling and stuff like that and it might differ from what you plan to do depending on how many shards of each type you might have and then my prediction for the summoner rush near the end of the fusion is that it's going to be a little bit more costly because this champion is a little bit better than average he's much better than like Brugard Jerobum or, or whatever, the last fragment summon. So I'm thinking it's going to be a five sacred minimum in order to get this. So 2750 for the mini milestone, and then probably like a 5500 for the higher milestone, which is not usually what I go for. I usually go just for the smallest one. I touched on it a bit here, but at the bottom, I also do like to include my energy plan, which is just how I plan to spend my energy over the course of the fusion. So you can see here that today at the start, I'm focusing on champion training, that being because Dungeon Diver starts tomorrow. So I want to focus more on the Fire Knight aspect of it 
once that goes live just because you get more dungeon divers credit from fire or from running any type of dungeon over running champion training and note this is not a guide on how you should spend your energy it's just listing how i plan to spend it and i do up that update this accordingly as well hopping back in game let's talk about some of the current events going on in the game starting off with my supply count i always like to do this at the start of fusions because a lot of people always say that fusions are ridiculously hard to do and i like to dispel that myth with preparedness and supplies such that you can actually pull it off a lot easier than you might think at the start. So stay tuned after the Fragment Summon ends because I will be posting in my community tab page a summary of the supplies that I spent over the course of the fusion. So we're starting things off with about, I want to say 105 million silver because there's a little bit of champion training that I've already done and I believe this morning when the fusion actually began, I was sitting around 105 million. And then for the gems, let's call it 49.50. So we'll check in at the end of the Fragment Summon and see how the deltas compare. In terms of the events, I already Already mentioned my plan for the dungeon divers it hasn't started yet and i'm going to hold off on using all of my like reset energy you can see it here for example we're working towards the daily or the playtime rewards but i'm going to hold on to this one i'm going to hold on to anything from quests and whatnot wait until tomorrow and then start with the fire knight and as, as well as continuing on with champion training and speaking of which we can take a look at the champion training tournament which i've done a little bit of effort into just because i don't like to be above the energy cap that's just my personal preference so i've just been using a little bit of energy here in there to get a little bit of credit in the champion training but the bulk of it i'm waiting until tomorrow once again once dungeon never starts and since we're here i might as well mention that you can see that there is a free summon for the summon pool which i'll be talking about probably tomorrow once the sand devil tournament goes live so we just we can confirm that those are all those are the only events that have the prism crystals in them but i just wanted to highlight that i end up spending more supplies than you would actually need to get the fusion because i do focus on maxing out the champion training event and the tournament typically because they happen to offer some good rewards rewards that I happen to need. So there you have it. That's going to be my fusion plan for stock the broken. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on his kit. Do you think he's going to be useful? I do. I most certainly do. And I do encourage all of you to go for him. I think he's going to be useful and I think he's going to help a lot of people. As always, if you did find this video helpful, then be sure to hit that like button down below. It really does help out the channel and also feel free to hit that subscribe button if you are enjoying the content on this channel. Thanks for watching and have a good one.